there's there, there may be no turning back after four or eight more years. No, there would be no turning back. We know she's as corrupt as Cattlegate. We know who she is. She's nothing. She's nothing new. Who's Hillary Clinton? A new, a fresh new face. She's a corrupt harridan. We had eight years of her running the country with her husband, my husband. Forget about the sexual antics. I frankly could care less. What I cared about was the corruption that surrounded the Clinton machine. That's what we need again. All right. So you you also say that Hillary and Republicans are in. At least say this was a headline on Breitbart. I must confess, and I read some most of the story are in cahoots. In what respect? New article today on uh, World Net Daily. Michael Savage, Obama owns Republicans. GOP not divided. It's compromised. But yesterday's story was the bigger one, which is you're referring to, which is Republicans in cahoots with Hillary. What did I mean by that? I watched the hearings last week, the so-called Benghazi hearings, and I kept waiting for the Godfather Part 1 to appear, meaning the <laughs> surprise witness. You remember the uncle from Sicily who comes in yeah. with a funny hat? Yeah. And he doesn't say a word? And the rat who was going to rat out the mafia suddenly dummies up because he looks at him. That was the end of the show. Blew the hearings apart. Where was the surprise witness that the fake Republican interrogators could have brought in? And who are they? I named them in Government Zero. I named the generals and the admiral who Obama fired right after Benghazi. They were ready to send aid. They had the planes. They had the copters. They had the special forces. They had Delta Force. They were ready to go. Somebody said, don't go. Somebody let the ambassador die and the bodyguards die. Somebody let that whole thing come apart. Who was that somebody? I don't know. Bring in the admiral who was fired by Obama. Admiral Goet, by the way. Bring in General Carter Ham, 26-year military veteran, African-American, in charge of uh, the Africa Command. A great man, ready to help. Fired right after Benghazi. Why was he not brought in by the Republicans during their hearing let, on Benghazi? Let me, because they were working with Hillary to anoint her. The establishment does not want Trump. The establishment would rather work with Hillary Clinton than with Donald Trump. Right. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, there was a silver lining to last night. Everyone knows not to trust CNBC. But, you know, if it has NBC in it, how can you trust it? Think of MSNBC. Think of NBC. Think of CNBC. They expose themselves uh, for what they are. They were the biggest loser. John Hardhead uh, is finished. He was rude. He made up lies. He looked like the anchor man in in a bad Hollywood movie, a classic lying pancake, uh, you know, made up anchor man. You know, a pretty boy who's looked at herself in the mirror for too long. The narcissist who stares at himself in the pool of water and falls into the water and not even knows he, know he's drowning. That's John Hardwood. So you can look at the silver lining. No one trusts the media to begin with. Now they trust them even less. And I'll leave this hour with one thought. It's time for the Republicans to refuse to debate anymore unless they control the format and they pick their own moderators. End of story. Agree or disagree. This is Michael Government Zero Savage back for another two hours right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I guess I can't say hour number two, but it is hour number two on this Thursday. I don't know if it's replayed another day anywhere, but it's Thursday, the 29th, and we hear from the Department of Energy that pumpkins are going to destroy the environment now because of the methane gas. Well, there's more hot air coming out of the media than there is out of all the pumpkins on the on the earth. Maybe you ought to cap their mouths with some corks if you want to prevent global warming. Well, we're talking about the debate. Big deal. I, I, I watched it. I wasn't going to watch it, but a friend of mine who's high up in the media food chain said, Savage, you've got to watch it. So I watched it. And I watched the usual attacks. The big loser here was CNBC. Uh, John Hardhead, I don't know who he is. Never heard of him. The guy looked like a fool. His bias was, uh, you know, he wore it on his sleeve. The guy with the glue head, I don't know who he was. When the camera came in too close on his head, you saw it was shoe polish and glue. 
It looked like he'd been held together with uh, with glue. I got to uh, tell you, it just didn't stop. An embarrassment. And what was Jim Cramer on? That's what I want to know. Couldn't have been a burrito. But nevertheless, there were some winners and some losers. The biggest winner was Donald Trump. Every poll uh, that is broader than just, let's say, right-wing polls shows Trump as the big winner. Rubio was anointed the big winner before uh, the debate, and that's because the establishment has chosen him as the best candidate. You know, as I said to Larry King today, as I was interviewed on his little RT show, and I keep referencing Larry King because he is an icon in the media. Now, forget liberal or not. And he's 80 years old, and the guy is, has more energy than anyone I've ever, I've ever seen next to me. I really enjoyed the interview. I think I'm going to invite him over for Knish in L.A. when I move down there. Or uh, whatever I can buy him. A, a, a seltzer water. I don't, know if they, I don't think they're allowed to sell it in L.A. anymore. It's too ethnic. But... You know, it was an interesting show, you know, uh, in, in many ways, because he was a decent liberal, a good man, who asked pointed questions in my book, Government Zero. That's what I was on for. I don't enjoy the makeup. You know, I still have the makeup on my head. I don't know how people do this. It reminds me when they painted themselves gold during magic shows and died of asphyxiation. That's how I feel after I put makeup on for a television show. But it explains the limitation of the speakers on television. It's the makeup is blocking their pores, and I think that that's why their brains are limited on all sides of the aisle. But let's get back to the, the issue at hand. Everyone's talking about the debate, who won, who lost, who this, who that. The reason they anointed Rubio is simple. He is the establishment candidate. And he can talk, by the way. He's a good talker. He used Republican talking points. He was prepared to say what he was going to say, irrespective of what was being said. And he is a very, very good talker. He's a smooth talker. This guy is a smooth talker. Rubio is a talker. Unfortunately, that's the one quality we're all sick and tired of. I'll take a bumbler who loves America rather than a silk smooth talker like Rubio or Obama. I mean, we, we've had uh, tens of years of great polished bloviators, right? Look at Obama, what a smooth speaker he is. And the nation's hanging on the brink of an abyss. So why did they pick Rubio? Think about this, as I said today. I'll say it again. I've said it on this show first. You have Sheldon Adelson, a billionaire Republican, supporting Rubio. You have Larry Ellison, a billionaire Democrat, I think, supporting Rubio. So you have two individuals supporting Rubio who want something from him. What, is, what do you think they want? In the case of Adelson, he wants to make sure there's a flow of labor for his hotel empire. And in the sake of Ellison... He wants a flow of H-1B visa workers to keep his costs as low as he can. That's one man's opinion. And that's why Rubio has been selected. And uh, he can, I don't think he can beat Hillary, by the way. That's the problem. He looks too much like a kid. And if only we had a media that's able to ask, would be able to ask Hillary a question, like lying about Benghazi. Not one question about Benghazi. And by the way, by comparison, incidentally, who's the guy with the dungarees? Uh, with the glasses that did the Democrat debate. Nice guy, the uh, CNN guy. Cooper. Cooper looked like a dignified individual compared to these clowns on CNBC last night. You gotta admit, Anderson Cooper actually went up in status in my mind. He was far less, uh, biased than this jerk was last night. And then this Miss Quick, I don't get that one. Where'd she come from? Who else was up there? Let's play the, um, the, uh, montage of John Hothead trying to attack the Republicans while posing as a moderator in clip 03. You've done very well in this campaign so far by promising to build a wall and make another country pay for it. Right. Send 11 million people out of the country. Cut taxes $10 trillion without increasing the deficit. Right. And make Americans better off because your greatness would replace the stupidity and incompetence of others. That's right. Let's be honest. <laughs> Is this a comic book version of a presidential ah, campaign a comic that book. you give nearly twice as much of a gain in after-tax income to the top 1% as to people in the middle of the income scale? Since you're the champion of Americans living paycheck to paycheck, don't you have that backward? No, that's you're wrong. I, I talked to economic advisors who have served presidents of both parties. They said that you have as much chance of cutting taxes that much without increasing the deficit as you would of flying away from that podium by flapping your arms around. As a preacher as well as a politician, you know that presidents need the moral authority to bring the entire country together. 
The leading Republican candidate, when you look at the average of national polls right now, is Donald Trump. When you look at him, do you see someone with the moral authority to unite the country? And to the issue no, of, I, I, I want to go back, if Governor I made Christie. it sure. to Governor the... Christie, you've said something that many in your party do not believe, which is that climate change is undeniable, that human activity contributes to it, and you said, quote, the question is, what do we do to deal with it? So what do we do? Well, first off, what we don't do is do what Hillary Clinton and John Kerry and Barack Obama want us to do, which is their solution for everything. Put more taxes on it, give more money to Washington, D.C., and then they'll fix it. Well, there's no evidence that they can fix anything in Washington, D.C. What should we do? What we should do is to be investing in all types of energy, John. All types of energy. And I've laid out... Being government? No, John. John, do you want me to answer? You want to answer. <laughs> Because, because I got to tell you the truth, even in New Jersey, what you're doing is called rude. So, uh... <laughs> I like Christy. You know, I was thinking about what a great group of guys and this woman up there, Carly, would make for cabinet. What a country we'd have. Can you imagine that when Trump wins, he gets to pick all these other people to run America for us in all the cabinet positions. I would put Christy in the Department of Homeland Security. He's a former prosecutor or att U.S. attorney. Man, would I feel safer. I go to sleep better at night knowing that Christie was in the Department of Homeland Security. I would put, it's obvious where Carson belongs. He should be running America's Health and Human Services. That's clear. It's obvious where uh, the others would go. I mean, Carly could run Department of Commerce, I think, right? I mean, I could pick cabinet positions for them that would make a much better nation than what we have right now. This is the Savage Nation. We are talking about not media bias, but the embarrassment of the media. They're basically finished. You had Miss Quick. You had this guy Hardhead, who is finished as a moderator. And, uh, and then you have, uh, that other one. I don't know who he was. That guy with the, with the polished head, with the, the, the shoe polish and the, and the, and the uh, floor wax on his head. He was the worst of them, by the way. I don't know where he got that from. I don't know, but the point is, is that there's a, there's a conclusion to be made from all of this. It's simple. And that is no more debates. Republicans boycott any debate unless they control it, they stage it, and they pick their own moderators. And I'm volunteering right now to be one of the moderators of the next Republican debate. And believe me, I can ask questions without attacking the candidates to get real answers, to pull this country out of the mess that it's in as a result of the government media complex. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. What do you want me to do, mince words? They destroyed this country. They're the ones who destroyed the mind of this nation, the media. And it was never more clearly on display than last night. And just being a liberal doesn't make you a bad person, believe me. There are liberals who are reasonable and ask real questions, and if you can answer them, you answer them. But when you go after someone's genitals on stage, that's not the media at work. you know. And by the way, I said something very interesting today that I thought of last night. I almost wrote it down. I have a habit of writing things down next to my bed. I learned it from a distant cousin. I was a, you know, a young kid in New York. I used to, you know how you learn when there's a big family around, you listen and you don't, you don't participate, but you learn, you listen, you, it seeps in your ears. And I was lucky enough to have a lot of intelligent, hardworking people in my family. And I remember there was a guy in Brooklyn I had never seen, but he was an engineer and because he was educated, he was looked up to because we were an immigrant family by and large on all sides. And I, I forget his name. Let's call him uh, Elliot. I don't know his name, Elliot. So they said, you know, Elliot, and everyone talked about him with this reverence and respect. They said, you know, Elliot writes things down before he goes to sleep that comes to his mind. He keeps a pad and a pen next to his bed. I picked that habit up then. Would you believe it? I, to this day, if I didn't write things down as they come to my mind next to my bed, in a, wherever, uh, I, I couldn't conduct the life I lead. I run a website. I do a radio show. I write books. I do a lot of things. You can't remember everything. So I should have written this down, but I didn't. But I remembered it anyway. Just to show you, I don't need to write everything down. And it, it occurred to me that the, the, the CNBC interrogators were tougher on the Republicans 
even though they're supposed to be moderators. They were tougher on the Republicans.